Hello coders, this is Carol and I'm a video software engineer at Canva with about 10 years of professional experience as both Android and front-end engineer. In this video, I'm going to talk about my master's degree in computer science. I will give you a quick overview of each course I took, then I will rate each of the courses in terms of how fun they were to learn and how useful they are once you start your professional career. I'll wrap up with a couple of reasons why you should or shouldn't pursue a master's degree in computer science depending on your circumstances. Hopefully, after watching this video, you will have a better idea whether doing a master's degree in computer science makes sense for you. By the way, if you haven't seen my last week's video in which I dissect my bachelor's degree in a similar way, make sure to check it out. You can find the link up in the corner of this video as well as in the description below. Let's get to it! I decided to do masters because I really wanted to get some support around the idea for my master thesis, which was called Universal Sense Simulation Interface, and it was a device you put on your back and via vibrations caused by vibration motors placed in the belt, you can kind of simulate different senses by using classical conditioning. So here I needed help with building the hardware, with programming the microcontrollers, with the whole theoretical research and I knew I would actually have access to some people that also specialize in cognitive science. So that's why I chose to stay and it was just two years and I knew that I would have a lot of opportunities to explore more of the computer science that I didn't have a chance to explore yet and also make some contact with other people that I could potentially one day start a business with. The master studies start with logic for computer scientists and here we learn introduction to propositional logic and first and second order logic element of model theory elements of proof theory and its role in computer science so that was quite interesting because it was the first time that i actually already had those mathematical models in my head i don't know where from so that felt really good when i would just know the answers to the questions and then people would come up to me afterwards, after the classes, and they would be like, how did you know that? And I'm like, I have no idea. And honestly, I miss this feeling. <laughs> I would give it five out of five in terms of fun, just because it's fun to feel smart, and three out of five in terms of how useful it is, because maybe it's actually not. Next up was compiler construction, and that was one of the best courses because it was just a lot of fun and it was really satisfying as well. So I created a compiler written in Haskell that compiles a Java-like language, so with like inheritance and abstractions and everything, into LLVM. Is it useful? If you're not writing your own language, probably not. But it's cool to be able to understand how it's done. Computational social choice theory or in short, how to make a lot of money on e-commerce. <laughs> Another one that I was really looking forward to is programmable logic devices. And I was lucky enough because I was the last year that actually had this course proposed. As people are not really interested on that low level of programming. So what it gives you is, for example, you can like create your own calculator by pretty much designing how the wires are going. So this is how microprocessor and processors are done later on. So just having kind of a basic idea of how it works under the hood is great. This is a really common motive you can see with me that I used my whole university to just understand the deeper levels of programming because I knew that at work I wouldn't necessarily be able to explore that and I was just really interested in the computer science as a whole. Next up was selected topics in computer science, which was just kind of a presentation of different seminars that are available to us, but it was quite useless for me as I already knew what I want to work on for my master thesis. So here comes the second semester. I already made my choice of the seminar and that was embedded systems and sensor networks. During those seminars, you usually just consult your thesis or your project if you do the practical part. You listen to the ideas others have. They make some demo presentations to practice before the final presentation. It's quite interesting. It wasn't happening very often, only when we had the need to consult something. Next one was software security. And this was great as it was pretty much 
a hacking course made by a guy that works as a white hat. And by the way, he's one year younger than me. So that was really useful, a lot of really practical knowledge to understand how to protect your apps from attacks like this. Five and five out of five. Next, we had another of the obligatory ones, which is concurrent and distributed programming. So that was, for example, programming in CUDA, which is like programming the graphic cards. And that's really useful for me now that I'm creating software for like video editing and also distributed systems programming. So kind of like a communication structuring between all of those nodes. Natural language processing. So that was NLP for Polish which is not very useful and I kind of hoped it would be for English. There was also way too much theory and not enough practice to keep me interested. So overall, I didn't really like this course that much, but I still think it's quite of, kind of cool to understand how NLP works. Game theoretic approach to social networks analysis. Game theoretic approach to social networks analysis, which is how to study groups based on game theory. Really cool, really useful, some elements of psychology and sociology in there mixed with computer science and game theory. Computational complexity. You would think like, oh, aren't you learning that from the very first year when you think about how, you know, like the big O notation and, and all of that. Not really, this is more of a classification of problems and how hard they are and also identifying problems that are not solvable for our current machines. In general, boring. So that's the end of year one and by this time I had my project almost ready. I'm saying project because I, I haven't even started writing my thesis at this point. The hardware, the software was kind of working together. So year two is supposed to consist of two semesters but I actually did more classes the previous years so I only had one full semester of classes. Here I took a bunch of classes about business and entrepreneurship and startups, which was quite a new offering at my uni, but I also really enjoyed it. I think it was very useful. I took intro to cognitive science because my thesis was somewhere on the edge between computer science and cognitive science, or you could even say it was more into the cognitive science than the computer science. So I just wanted to understand the basic, like the introduction to that whole domain. It's kind of a merge between neuroscience and psychology and computer science. Very interesting, not really useful. Approximate reasoning. This was one of the coolest courses because the professor who was running it actually had a business where he put that theory into practice. In short, it was databases that wouldn't store the actual data but the statistics that are important. It was cool because you could literally see how his research made him... It was cool because you could see how he turned his research into an actual business. And the last course of this year, programming in logic. So that was advanced course of Prolog, which we learned during the third year or like the, the last year of bachelors. Honestly, the time of my life, it's like a whole semester of solving puzzles and riddles and like the satisfaction you have when you solve those problems, just because it's such a different way to approaching them than you do usually. I love it. So during the next semester, I just took my time to polish my thesis, improve my programs, improve my hardware, write the document itself, put enough photos and do some experiments to see if it actually works. Spoiler alert, it did. My thesis actually won a couple of awards and I presented it in a few different places, also got some job offers related to it. I even got an offer that someone would invest into it which I didn't take and I'm kind of glad I didn't because I chose going to Australia instead. But I could create a whole video about this thesis and I think I will. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments below and I will make sure to schedule that video for later. So I think it's worth mentioning that every semester of my education, I also took climbing classes, which were organized and fully paid for by my university. I had an access to a great coach Later on, I had to start paying something when I got into the more competitive 
level, but honestly it was a fraction of the price I would pay for such a professional coaching. And this is definitely the highlight of my university education. <laughs> and now to the final question. Should you get a master's degree in computer science? Well, as always, it depends. There are two different scenarios in which you would consider a master's degree in computer science. First, you studied computer science or software engineering and you already have a solid foundation in the domain. In this case, I can see three reasons why you would like to continue your education. First, and most obvious, is that you are considering an academic career. In this case, depending on where you live, master's degree might be a requirement for you to continue on your PhD path. Second, and this is what my experience was, you have a research project in mind that you need some support with, and your university is able to provide you access to experts and tools you would otherwise struggle to find. And third, there is just so much more that you want to explore before you pick your career path, and the university provides you a safe learning environment while allowing you to simultaneously gain some work experience as master programs are usually not too intense. Okay, so what about the second scenario in which you have an undergrad degree but from an unrelated or loosely related field? You might think that doing a master's degree in computer science is the quickest way for you to switch your career and becoming a software engineer. This is not necessarily true. Grad studies are usually targeted to people who want to expand their knowledge in a given field. But if you don't have strong foundations, you won't get them in that program. If you're considering career switch, you should first seek to understand what fundamental knowledge you are missing and try to fill those gaps first. You can learn online, join a coding bootcamp, or just do a whole undergrad program if your situation allows for that. In my opinion, you should be able to get a job as a generic software engineer before you decide on studying masters of computer science. Then, if your dream career is within one of those theory-heavy domains like artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, etc., you can continue your education. So before I tell you if I regret spending two more years at university instead of joining the workforce full-time, do me a small favor and smash that like button, leave a comment if you like this video or if you have anything to add. It helps the channel to get some recognition from the YouTube algorithm and helps me keep motivated and make more of those videos. So, do I regret it? Not at all. I enjoyed my master's degree much more than my bachelor's one, mostly because of the freedom of exploring and creating whatever comes to my mind and all of the support I received on the way. I hope you'll be as happy as I am now with the choices you're going to make, whether that includes university or not. Bye!